We're getting ready for the concert. Throughout their career, they've had concerts when, during a music festival, they would play in some corner tent for like nine people, sometimes twenty. How do you keep going after such concerts? You work, you take your craft seriously, and only a handful of people pay attention to you. I guess that's the proof that if you have a dream and put your heart into it, you don't give up. As Vaidatis himself has said to me when I've interviewed him on the radio show, when life gets really hard and you're about to give up, it might just be that your reward is waiting right around the corner. You just need to take a few more difficult steps. When faced with difficulties, 99% of people will decide to stop and do something else. The thing is, when we reached this point, we said, no matter how hard it is, we'll take one more step forward and see what happens, no matter how hard it is. I think that was a critical moment in their career where they either had to come up with something big or admit to themselves that the game is not worth the candle. Either they make all of their dreams come true or forget about them altogether. I think that's where they were. But then we saw them at the Eurovision with Yes I Do. Now, D minor. My first thought when I saw the group was that they were unusual. Not really something for Eurovision. They were weird, strange, but in a good way. I remember thinking that finally we're getting something new and fresh at the national selection. They weren't popular or well-known, but that particular Eurovision performance with the song Yes I Do immediately drew a lot of attention to them. What they did on stage, all that stepping on cubes, those circles, the inner meaning of the song and such, how they wanted everything to look on stage. It wasn't boring, it was new and exciting. They sounded different, they looked different, it was good. I wanted a song that would be true to us and would bring people hope that they can overcome depression. The song itself is not about depression, it's about light. And we did that. I wasn't worried about the reception. If at least one person feels better and understands that there is light, it's good enough. When you mention depression, a lot of people say, cheer up, smile, everything will be okay, life goes on. But smiling doesn't cut it, it's a way deeper issue. A lot of us have possibly been through a similar experience and are left with similar feeling. It's not really talked about much and rarely heard from the lips of famous people. Why that has did it have possibly even encouraged others, inspired them. I've started learning about different techniques which have been practiced for thousands of years. That's how I discovered yoga. Then I decided to stop drinking alcohol. I realized that I'd never really been much of a drinker anyway, and often did it only to be polite. Step by step I removed meat, dairy products and eggs from my diet as well, and I became a vegan. I started feeling better. I remember that 2019 was a pivotal year for us. One of our band members, there were four of us back then, said, this is not going anywhere, and he left the band. Even I was thinking, why am I wasting my time here? It's pointless, maybe I should just quit. But then I realized that if I get all depressed and drop this, I'll be the one losing something. We said, the show must go on. We started working on new songs, and one of them that we started working on in the early spring of 2019 was On Fire.
when I called Vaidatas to invite him to a dance project, I asked, what are your future plans regarding Eurovision, your career, and everything? He didn't want to go into details, but I got the impression that he had certain plans. And so I said, listen, let's be smart about it. Come and dance in this project, you'll remind people about yourself, gain some fans and fame, and then you participate in Eurovision. Let these dances be your warm-up. You like this idea? I remember it was the sixth show, and LRT people started saying, it's time to start preparing for Eurovision. A shiver ran down my spine. We had not recorded any vocals were on fire, a few lyrics were also still missing. It dawned on me that I must do something. I didn't want to dance badly, but I couldn't stay in this project. I counted the weeks and I knew I wouldn't make it in time if I stayed. The couple leaving the project is... It just so happened that I got eliminated and I went straight back to the studio to finish recording and working on the song On Fire. All members of the band have this attitude that a song can't be released until it's perfect. So we spent hours working on all sorts of details, small effects, things like that. It had to be polished to be perfect. You can see how many little pieces we have here. I believe that the time we've spent on the little details, though, is uh, the reason for its success. Seemingly insignificant things require the most time, and the likes of percussions and similar sounds added to On Fire. We finished recording on fire in the studio and sent out all the documents needed for the Eurovision. It was January the 3rd and I realized that we had no money. No money for a music video or even stage clothes. But I pulled myself together and decided not to be a victim. I used the skills that I gained from working in the company. I sat down, made this PDF presentation about the group and who we are. I explained that we have a new song and what it's about, added a private link so they could have a listen, and asked for support. I sent this straight up business presentation to all my friends and all their friends. Then I did another thing that I also had learned in the company. Active sales. Which means picking up the phone and saying, have you received my offer? What do you think about it? I had a lot of no thank yous, no I can't. No, I'm not interested in the Eurovision, no sorry, maybe next time, that sort of thing. The first time I heard a yes, I burst into tears. More positive answers followed and we managed to collect the few thousand euros that we needed for the music video. Stage outfits and everyday expenses. I remember I sat down and put on the headphones. It was crystal clear to me that this was a new beginning. 